hey guys so as you know like rest is one of the most frequently used apis or web services in real time along with so so today i would like to share my knowledge on rest api So REST, it basically stands for Representational State Transfer. It is an architectural pattern. So unlike your SOAP, SOAP itself is a protocol which is used for transferring the messages between different systems or applications built on different platforms or different languages. Unlike that, REST is an architectural pattern. So any web service which is designed as per the principles of REST we can call it as a RESTful API or a RESTful web service. REST uses HTTP protocol for transferring the messages and doing all this kind of, you know, data transmission. So as it is using this HTTP protocol, it uses the HTTP methods, get, put, post, patch and delete, or you can even call them as verbs, okay, get, put, post, patch and delete. We'll talk about these methods in the next few minutes. So in REST, you have one method for each purpose. Unlike in SOAP, you know, you define your own customized methods and you know you like your you write your own logic and doing all these things. But in REST, the methods are fixed. So you have only five methods and you have to go and use them. Then REST is specially designed to work with uh, you know files, media, and any particular objects on other hardware device. Now let's see some differences between SOAP and REST. As I told you, SOAP is a protocol and it was designed a long time back before the REST came into the picture. And this was used only for exchanging of information and SOAP always used XML for transmission of data. REST is an architectural pattern. It is synonymous to HTTP protocol. SOAP always deals with XML. It can't deal with anything else. Whereas REST, you can deal with XMLs, JSON, HTML, plain text. You know, you can use different types of data like this. SOAP is very, very secure when compared to REST. So that's the reason you see most of the banking applications or other secured projects, they rely more on SOAP when compared to REST. So the reason being that SOAP can use WS security for transmission of data, which is not possible in REST. Why is it not possible in REST? Because REST uses HTTP, right? That itself is a very unsecure protocol. Okay. So that's the reason SOAP is more secure. Then, SOAP requires more bandwidth. Or you can say, you know, uh, the, the reason behind that is like in SOAP, you transfer XMLs. It takes, it requires a lot of, you know, it has a lot of content and requires a lot of bandwidth for the transmission. So, you know, in applications or in places where you have this bandwidth constraints, it's not suggested to go for SOAP. We go for REST. Because REST basically uses this JSON, which is very lightweight. Uh, so less bandwidth, you can transmit the data. SOAP cannot make use of REST, whereas REST can make use of SOAP. So vice versa is not possible. So some tokens generated by SOAP can be used as an input in the REST and you can, you know, you can use it. But vice versa, you can't do that. SOAP is stateful. So in projects where you want to maintain the data, like service one is uh, uh, having some data, now it calls service two. So until the service two comes back, you want to maintain that service one session and you hold on so that can be done in so because it is stateful whereas rest is stateless it doesn't maintain the session details you know so you can't go for rest in where your examples where you need a stateful things and rest is faster than soap because rest is stateless right so it has its own independent methods. I know each method for its own processing has its own processing. So REST is comparatively fast. Now based on your requirement, you can choose between SOAP and REST. Okay. So these are some of the differences between SOAP and REST. Then now let's talk about each of the methods in the REST API. This is something, you know, you even hear people frequently asking in interviews the differences between each of these methods. So let's talk with about the get method. Get method is basically used to fetch the data. It is just like, you know, 
writing a select query on a database just fetching of data or retrieval of data is always get method now can i use get method and you know insert the data see if you write a piece of code that way nobody can help us but, but the basic definition is get means to fetch the data and you have to use it the same way if you write some code inside to insert the data or delete the data no, that that's not expected but system is not going to stop you from doing that but that's not expected similarly put put is basically used for insertion or updating the data okay so if you want to insert a new record or update an existing record we go for put post again it is for inserting the data now what is the difference between put insertion and post insertion we'll talk about it patch patch is basically again used to update the data again what is the difference between update in patch and put we'll talk about it in next few minutes delete as the name itself indicates it is just used to remove the data or you know delete the record okay now get here is like uh, yeah, put here is like insert or update right so in case of put when you insert a new record okay the request url and the response url remains the same so if you are inserting uh, suppose you are trying to uh, update an employee with employee id 100 okay if the employee doesn't exist maybe you are trying to create a new employee with the number 100 so in this case you are passing the employee id so the request and the response url remains the same in the response url you will not get the employee id because you have already passed it in the request as the employee was not existing a new record was inserted into the db okay whereas in case of post the employee is not existing and you are not even passing any employee id there you just send some data to create a new employee with that data and in return you get the employee id so here the request and the response urls will not be the same okay you will get some employee id or something like that a unique identifier in return so that is the difference between put and post in session and coming to the update input and patch see input you are actually updating the whole record the whole record of data you try to update in patch it is like customized suppose i have 10 columns in the db table i only would uh, like to update one column so in my json i only send that new uh, record you know new column data i don't send the rest of the variables suppose i have 10 columns i don't send all the 10 variables i only send that one specific column which i am planning to update whereas in put you have to push all the 10 delete it is just used to remove the data which we have spoken earlier so these are the differences between this get you know put post and patch updates and insertions okay and again you might have heard people saying that put is idempotent and post is not idempotent so what does that mean which means that put action can be repeatable so if i say like uh, employee name is equal to nikhila and if i call this put method 100 times so 100 times you are updating the db record with the employee name is equal to nikhila the output is same right first you said nikhila again you're saying nikhila it remains the same whereas in case of post it is not idempotent because you know you're inserting new records so first i inserted a record for nikhila again you're doing it so second time another record gets inserted again you're doing it. third record gets inserted so put is idempotent because you you do the same action n number of times the result doesn't change post is happening like an incremental thing you know i plus plus you're incrementing something so the n number of times you call it n number of records get added and the output always changes so post is not idempotent okay now when should i choose rest over so as i told you uh, first thing is like uh, uh, when you have a limited bandwidth okay you can go for rest especially you know when you're building some mobile apps we prefer to go with rest because it's like uh, limited bandwidth and uh, you know it's lightweight so the content gets quickly loaded in the device so we prefer to go with rest services then when you have statelessness like you don't want to maintain the information from one pay you know from one service to another service or when you're traveling you don't want to maintain the information then you can go for rest and the other best thing that you get with rest is catching so uh, let's take a get method okay you're trying to execute the get method like 100 times in a day so instead of hitting the client machine 100 times you can make use of catching so you can catch the request 
and next time when you get the request you check in the cache if the output is already available in the cache you just give them the output and you don't query the system again so caching is one good benefit you get when you go for rest so if you have such requirements so you know uh, a repeatable action like executing get multiple times in a day or executing you know any method multiple times like a delete a multiple times in a day or something sorry ignore delete get you know get is one good example or put you know the same request you're trying to update a number of times for such things you know catching is going to help us then ease of coding yeah rest service is very very easy to code because we can use json it's very simple like initializing a variable a is equal to 10 that's how we write, write json so ease of coding wise even rest is better now what are the challenges you come across in a rest api first thing is like lack of security as i told you we use http method which has the very basic security so not suitable for good secure projects generally and lack of state so statelessness in some projects you know you have to maintain the statefulness like when you go from one service to another service we would like to capture the uh, session details and you know you want to maintain the statefulness which is not possible when you go with the rest api so considering all these things you have to decide whether you want to go for rest or soap okay so in the next video i'll tell you how can we implement a rest api using each of these methods